first place that I want to start with is like how how you started out. You know, when when actually did you first start to realize that filming was was something you enjoyed or video was something you enjoyed? So it was back in high school and uh I was also a big fan of like building little gas scooters and pocket bikes. And at the time, like those types of like micro mobility, uh, you know, ways of transportation were really popular, like go peds, mopeds. And, um, on, and this was before Google owned YouTube. So things were way different back then. And, um, yeah, I was constantly researching on, on the internet, like how to take apart these engines, how to put them back together. And I realized that there's a lot of written articles, but there's not a lot of video uh, tutorials showing people how to take apart these engines and, and, and doing all this stuff. So I was like, okay, this is what I'm going to do. I'm just going to study two-stroke engines as much as I can. And then I'm going to just try and make things easier for people and upload video tutorials on YouTube. I just wanted to see what it was like. And I was like 15, 14 at the time. So I had a little Sony Cybershot camera, really like really tiny camera. It was like 480p resolution at best. And um, I just started making like these tutorial videos on YouTube, showing people how to take apart two stroke engines, put them back together, how to soup them up, make them faster. And then my channel started gaining traction. And by gaining traction, I mean, I got like 200 subscribers within like the first five or six months. But for me at the time, that was like a lot because I was like, mm. whoa, how is this actually gaining traction? And one of my two stroke tutorial videos hit like 300,000 views or yeah, was it three? I think it was around 300,000 views within the first year. And I was like, whoa, I'm like 15 at the time. I'm like, whoa, okay, um, this is pretty cool. And this was before you could really monetize your channel. So I was just doing this for fun at the time. So yeah, that's how I started doing like video production, I should say. Like I just started straight off doing tutorials and just showing people. But at the time I didn't have any lighting equipment, microphone equipment or anything like that. It was just like a 480p Cybershot camera. That's it. That's what got me well, started. I, I know. I think that's that's you know that's that's amazing. That's what you know. It, it, it's it's quite easy to forget that you know when you're starting out, you don't need all the bells and whistles right from the right from the get go. Actually, the one of the one of the things that I've I've noticed a lot in the in people who have been successful, mm -hmm. you know, they didn't hang around for the perfect piece of equipment. They took what they could get and made something you know and that seems to be like a very very common thread um yeah i think you know well let me actually i'm gonna I'm, i was about to get ahead of myself i'm gonna come back to talk equipment a little bit later because i think that's that's actually really important um but like taking taking that a little bit further uh mm -hmm. you know you've obviously gone past making videos about two-stroke engines um, where, yeah. did, where did that actually lead you? Where did that leave you, lead you after, after high school? Okay. So I graduated high school. Um, I'm about like eight, 17, 18 at the time. And, uh, my cousin actually got me this job, uh, teaching, uh, kids like five, six year old kids, how to make like little, you know, music videos or anything, you know, little things like that, how to make cool, like claymation, stop motion animation. At the time, I didn't know too much about it, but I was interested in videography and doing all this type type of stuff at the time. So uh, I got hired at the job. I told them I had, you know, mild experience with cameras and editing, and they actually had a blue screen stage, which was really cool. So these kids would come to the studio. We would make a whole like party, like birthday party for them and shoot a music video at the same time. And I was just shooting like on a little uh, Canon camcorder in front of this blue screen and we had an editor and I was like, okay, wow, this is actually starting to be a lot of fun for me. I want to see what else there is out there to do. So I did that job on and off for about a year, year and a half. And, um, you know, it covered the bills, so to speak. Uh, I was able to afford like a better camera and a seven S Mark one, um and like a 24 to 70 zeiss lens so that was like one of my first like pro camera setups and um 
I was like, okay, I want to start making more money. How do I, how do I become better? How do I, uh, you know, how do I progress from here? So I went on Google and I live in Los Angeles. So I was like, okay, maybe uh, since I live in Los Angeles, it should be pretty easy to find like some sort of mentor or a client. Maybe I can barter with them. Um, they could advise me on how to run a business and I could give them free like video production work. So I came across this one life coach slash, slash uh, dating coach uh, who lives who lived in, in uh, Marina Del Rey at the time. And I emailed him and I was like, hey man, I noticed you have a YouTube channel and you do a lot of dating advice videos. And I was really interested in helping you uh, produce better content. So that way you can focus on just producing you know, the advice and stuff like that and I'll handle the production side. So he said, yeah, let's give it a shot. So I worked as an intern for about six months for him. And after six months, he was like, Josh, I'm going to start paying you 500 bucks a month as a retainer. And I was like, okay, let, let's do it. And together we teamed up and we started producing better content for his YouTube channel. And while he was building his YouTube channel, he was teaching me tips on keywords, uh, you know, what, what specific keywords gain traction and how to actually, he's the one who taught me all about clickbait. He was the one who taught me how to <laughs> gain a person's attraction just by the title and the thumbnail and his techniques worked. And he also taught me how to be better in front of the camera, how to um, present myself better. And that just increased my confidence. So at the time I was like, okay, if this guy can do it, then I can build my own YouTube channel and really start you know, pushing out content. So he started slowly paying me more every month. And then I started saving up more. And then I started buying more camera equipment, uh, Sony a7R3 I bought after. And uh, I started, you know, saving up, you know, microphone equipment, lighting equipment. And that's how it actually started becoming a business for me. Mm. Yeah, yeah, I think that's, that's actually really interesting. It's like you, you, you found a mentor in the dark arts of, uh, yeah, of, uh, exactly. you know, <laughs> yeah. Cause uh, yeah. Uh, so this was at a time where YouTube was, was monetized again. Cause uh, it's yes, actually, it's so quite, this is like, yeah, quite easy for Sorry. people to forget that that wasn't always the case. Um, exactly, you know, money, yeah. th there was a lot of time where you couldn't make money off the internet, uh, in a traditional sort of way or a production sort of way. Exactly. I mean, yeah, you hit it right on the nail. I mean, it's literally when that happened, when I started working with that life coach, uh, that's, I think, you know, two or three years after Google started monetizing YouTube videos. So it was, it was pretty, it was a pretty wild experience. Like I never realized how people can make money off the internet. My parents never realized how people can make money off the internet. I was supposed to be uh, an engineer like my father. And uh, sooner or later I moved out and they were like, how the hell, how is this guy affording this? Like, how can he move out? They just don't understand <laughs> like how the internet makes money for people. So I think we're living in an amazing time right now where people can just be like, you know what? Uh, I'm going to just be on my own. I'm going to start my own business and, you know, do everything through the internet, make my money through the, I think it's a great opportunity for everybody mm -hmm. to just, you know, try something different. And, uh, yeah, I mean, it's, it, it was, it's a very cool ride, you know, I'm still on the roller coaster, but it's a very yeah. cool ride. <laughs> <laughs> um, like coming, coming back to the YouTube channel then, like you, you've grown yeah. that organically from from nothing mm -hmm. uh yeah and that's that's not an easy path uh to hoe at all i mean what it, it's I mean, we're, we're looking yeah. at your um your channel right now but oh yeah so it's uh so what got my channel actually the traction uh was glide cam tutorials uh so before gimbals electronic gimbals were a thing um glide cams were super popular you know devin super tramp he made them extremely popular uh <laughs> yeah that was that was me that was me but yeah this is one of the videos that actually gave people faith in the content that i was making uh 
And uh, glide cams were were a pain to use uh, if you didn't know like how to balance it or you know where you should position your hands and stuff like that. So, you know, similar to my two stroke engine tutorial videos, I was like, okay, uh, you know, using glide cams are very difficult. Let me make tutorials to show people how to use them properly. And I was actually wowed by the reaction that I got from the audience. They're like, wow, this guy made this extremely simple. So I was like, awesome. Okay, I'm going to start making a lot more tutorials on this. So I started producing a lot of glide cam manual stabilizer tutorial videos and people really took to them and liked them. So I kept going. I've, I've now put two and two together and realized that um, you're the one who taught me how to balance my glide cam and set up my <laughs> Mavic Pro. <laughs> um, so, uh, so, so thanks. Thanks for that. That's nice. Uh, Anytime. That's, that's really good. All right. We'll, we'll talk about that. We'll talk about that later. Sure. Um, I mean, I, th I think you've, you've kind of answered answered where I was I was sort of going uh going to go which was like deciding about what sort of content that you you make what sort of content you pursue um mm -hmm. but actually I mean that, can you talk talk a little bit more about that because you've got you've got a mix of of stuff on your uh, on your channel yeah so it started off as tutorial videos then review videos and I noticed that review videos don't do nearly as well as tutorial videos because I still think YouTube is the number one platform for learning. I think it's the best mm. resource for learning ever. You can learn anything you want. You could learn how to I, you know, take apart a two-stroke engine. You could learn how to cook. You <laughs> could learn how to do all of these different things with YouTube being this extremely powerful source of information. So looking back i realized how powerful tutorial videos are and they still are uh, especially in the filmmaking community people just want to learn how to do things they want to learn how to be better i'm still one of those people obviously i still look up tutorials on youtube on how to be more efficient with my with my setups and and you know how to color grade better how to just do different video effects so i think uh tutorials really are the key to how to make anybody better. And I think that's the content that got me in the space and is keeping me in the space. And I'm gonna start producing more tutorials again uh, in the future for my YouTube channel. That sounds, yeah, sounds sounds like a really good uh, a good plan. Um, like, and you, you, you also, you're also working with a lot of different uh, brands as well. Yeah. Um, both with, you know, with, with uh, a lot of the hardware and of, of the photo equipment. Um, yeah. Exactly. I mean, I actually have a very, is, is very that... interesting story. Yeah. On that. Oh, please, um, please hit me with it. And then we'll come back to me. Yeah. So when I started producing these Mavic pro tutorials, uh, I had a connection with DJI and, uh, they actually offered me to move to, uh, I think it was Hong Kong. Or, or Shenzhen in China. And I was gonna live there for a little bit interning for DJI. And obviously that plan fell through. There was just, you know, some things that just didn't work out logistically, but um, DJI was probably one of, the, one of the biggest brands that I've personally worked with and MSI. And uh, I think because of that experience that I had uh, and that potential uh, of doing all these different things. I was like, okay, uh, we got to push, we got to push this, this content. And then I started working with other brands like Zune, uh, another very popular and powerful, uh, gimbal manufacturer, um, you know, Aperture, Godox, like all of these different companies. And, um, mm. they started realizing like, yeah, people watch videos on YouTube. So brands started reaching out and to different creators. And I, I think it's just such a good space. Uh, YouTube is just such an excellent space. Um, I kind of backtracked, but yeah, that's, that's what I wanted to say about that. <laughs> no, I, th I think that's important. Cause I think I, I actually, I'd like to hear, hear yours. Cause I think how important do you think the role of YouTube is, is 
introducing people to to new gear uh and and new you know new new software obviously you know I, i've obviously i acknowledge the awkwardness of asking this on a youtube live stream but i i think it's uh i think it's an interesting interesting topic yeah all of my gear purchases have been influenced uh through youtube everything um i have to look at comparison videos i have to look at low light videos unfortunately though because of youtube's compression um if you really want to see real test videos you have to go on vimeo uh but youtube was just like you know the comment section if you want to know what other people are thinking and you want to know like the majority of what people want to buy you go in the comment section immediately and that's like another incredible source of information that youtube provides is just a lot of user feedback and i think that's the most important part when you ever whenever you make a, a purchasing decision and you're just unsure if this is what's going to satisfy your filming needs or production needs look at the comments look at what people are saying you know forums are another great source but i think youtube the comment section is a forum in a sense you know yep. so i think uh that's another great source of information and that's honestly what influenced me a lot and a lot of my purchasing decisions yeah i think i think you're you're definitely not alone in this in this room of two uh you know both <laughs> both of us um fall into that into that same trap um well not even not it's not even a trap it's actually it's an amazing resource uh, especially mm -hmm. as we can't go out and uh, easily see uh you know equipment at trade shows or or you know that sort of thing anymore um you know mm -hmm. it's an, an invaluable resource i think um and it also it also helps to to sort of get you aware of of other brands that you might not possibly be um you know be aware of at the time like smaller brands who are doing yeah. interesting and inventive stuff mm -hmm. i mean uh, have you have you worked with with any of those those types of uh of brands uh yeah there was uh one brand is I'm trying to remember the name uh they're it's called Varanus and Varanus is like a type of lizard and they're uh they're a company based out in Poland and they make motorized sliders so very very small brand but the quality of the of of the parts that they use cuz everything is manufactured in Poland it's incredible and I'm like how is this not how is this company not killing it you know how how do people not know about this company and uh they were actually one of the first companies that i collaborated with when i think i had like five thousand subscribers uh they were like hey let me uh, let us send you a motorized slider and you tell us what you think in a video and i was like all right and uh yeah small companies like that uh another company called digital photo um they're another smaller company and then at, at the time uh aperture was a small company too you know uh mm. and this is when they had their first gen lights like uh the aperture one half w i think it was called i still have the light and it, it's exciting to see how these companies just transform how they evolve like how lights now have microchips in them and ai like who would have thought that filmmaking lights would have their own processors like this is absolutely yeah. insane so it's it's crazy to see how lights are now becoming as popular or as interesting as cameras are they honestly are like i'm obsessed with lights especially ones that are rgb and different color temperatures and such so yeah i mean these small companies um are are starting to understand like the importance of you know youtube and uh i honestly i i was blessed to actually see a lot of these smaller companies blossom into like this incredible like incredible incredible company <laughs>